Cool. Okay. So um, one, of the, one of the criticisms we got from some historians and why we're trying to offer some solutions on Friday was that we didn't show that there were, there's two Appala Appalachians now. After the war on poverty, there was one that's thriving and doing well, but there's some people that feel that they were cut off and the war on poverty didn't really help them. Do you think that's, that's a fair statement? I think you could make that statement about any place in the country. Uh, in the inner city of any major metropolitan area, there will be some people who have been helped by programs and there will be some people who feel like they've been left behind. I think you can say the same thing in eastern Kentucky that you could say uh, about every place else. The fact is that, you know, while we still have tremendous problems, we've got a whole lot of success stories that we didn't have 40 years ago. And, and things are getting better and, and the quality of life is improving. We still have a way to, ways to go, but we're getting there. Okay. And um, one of the, the, the interesting solutions you talked about was broadband. So I think the latest stats were a third of the people in eastern Kentucky have broadband versus over 50 percent in the rest of the country. Is there specific amounts of money you're giving or um, tax breaks or how are you going to get broadband to those people? Over the past few years, we've been spending some money from the state level in getting broadband out in the state. The stimulus package that Congress just passed also has some broadband money in it that you can apply for, and we plan on looking into that and perhaps going after that money to help us expand broadband even more. Cool. Is there, I know we're catching you off guard, is there any amount of money that you know of or any amount of money that you're going to guide it to the towards that program? We're just now developing our ideas on that because we've just gotten the details of the stimulus package uh, bill that was passed, but we're going to put that together as quickly as possible and get to work. Cool. And if you, uh, if you had Barack Obama's year and he said, like, I'm going to give Eastern Kentucky one thing, what do you think you would ask him for? I would ask him for a, a few more million dollars to do a lot more things with. Uh, the stimulus package will help us, but obviously during this financial downturn that the whole country and the whole world is experiencing, we're limited in some of the things that we can do until the economy picks back up again. So uh, the more money we can get from the federal government, we're certainly going to use it wisely. I, I'm not worried about anybody looking over our shoulder and wondering if we've wasted any money. We've got a lot of very good long-term investments that we can make. Are there any cool specific programs you know of? Anything innovative that's come to your office that will help the poorest people in that region? We're putting together a number of possible ideas right now on how to go after stimulus money and where to spend it. And once we develop those, we'll be announcing them. Okay. And coal severance, again, is the one thing people really wanted to hear from us about. I mean, people tell us that even they say they should get all the money, but even if they're getting 50 percent, only 15 percent is going to like schools and libraries and th things that would really help them. Is, how do you come up with that percentage and should they be getting more of that money that goes directly to their quality of life? Well, the legislature passes the laws that sets out the percentages of the coal severance tax and where it goes. Right now, 50% of it goes into the general fund and 50% goes back to the coal producing counties. But as I mentioned, that 50% that comes to the state, much of it ends up being spent in eastern Kentucky also. So there's a lot of advantage to this coal severance money. It is, in, a, in essence, what we call one-time money. You don't go and, and fund continuing programs with money that you're not sure you'll have next year, uh, like a tax revenue might be an income tax or something. So you would want to spend it on things like buildings or things like water and sewer systems that can help long term but doesn't incur a continuing obligation every year. We've been building a lot of things in eastern Kentucky that are improving the quality of life. You know, there are more folks on sewer systems now in eastern Kentucky than there's ever been and, and good water treatment plants. People have clean drinking water. Those are the kinds of infrastructure that you have to develop in areas before you can really have an economic impact on jobs. Okay. And what about the, 
the 500,000 people who we read the stat that 500,000 people are living in poverty, what's, what uh, opportunities or what, um, what do they have to look forward to? What's coming to help them? Of course, the definition of poverty, I assume, is, is the income levels that the federal government puts out. And uh, we do have a lot of folks in eastern Kentucky and in other parts of Kentucky that would fall below that poverty level. But uh, many of them are working and have jobs and are providing for their families. And we are working with them to provide better health care with our K-CHIP program, for instance, for the children in those low-income families, to provide access to other health care for the adults, to provide job opportunities by stimulating our economy with some of the stimulus money that's coming in as well as, as other efforts that we're making. So we're trying to put a comprehensive push on all across our state, including in eastern Kentucky, to get our economy moving again because people at work are the answer to almost everything in your economy. If you want a better quality of life, people need a job. People need to be able to spend the money that they get on groceries and, and to support their kids. Uh, people need a good education and we're really improving the situation in Kentucky on that. So those are the things we'll keep concentrating on, and if we do, we're going to really reduce that number. Okay. And the weatherization, is that, is that, that program sounds good? Is that going to specifically go to the rural parts of eastern Kentucky? We'll first have a pilot program to see how it works, but assuming that it does work, uh, we will be going and trying to get more money from the federal government that's set aside in this stimulus package for those kinds of programs. And I'd love to do it statewide, and obviously a lot of that will be done in eastern Kentucky because there's a big need there. Cool. And what, what's the message to the people in our story, the, the people that are in the most dire position? Is there hope for them? Do you have a message for them? The future in Kentucky for everybody is going to be bright. Uh, we are working very hard with local leaders to improve job situations and improve the quality of life. Uh, I know we've got some tough situations and this current economy is not going to help us any right now. But we're determined that in the end we're going to have folks that are better educated, uh, will have the availability of a job, will have the availability of health care. These are issues that our whole country is dealing with right now. We're dealing with them here in Kentucky also. But we're making a lot of progress, and I think, I think there's a lot of reason to be optimistic.